Welcome to Sacrilegious Discourse. I'm husband. And I'm wife. Together we're reading the Bible for the very first time. We grew up without religion and wanted to know what all the fuss was about. Well, what have we learned so far? That God is a dick, and apparently some people believe in talking donkeys? We're not trying to pass ourselves off as experts. Nope, we're just reading the Bible for the first time and giving our first take reaction. If you'd like to join us in this venture, you might consider starting at episode one. Otherwise, jump in wherever you like. All right, let's go read the Bible. Yeah, let's get to it. Hey, wife. Yes, husband. Did you know that we are now on Patreon? Um, yes, because you told me, but also, no, tell me more. (laughs) So we're on Patreon now. Are we? We are. And our supporters can go there and support us. And we have multiple levels all the way up to You Killed God. That sounds really drastic and escalated quickly-ish. Well, no, there's multiple levels before there. So it it escalates on a sliding scale of... You know, cheap to to not cheap. But, you know, we can definitely use any amount. So, like, any support is always appreciated. So, what exactly is Patreon? It's a place where you can show your support for our podcast. Just our podcast? Any podcast or any (laughs) performer. But, you know, we're the ones that, you know, you're listening to right now. So, maybe you should, uh, you know, support us. That'd be awesome. That would be awesome. But we love you anyway. So, all you got to do is go to Patreon. Look up Sacrilegious Discourse. It's actually patreon.com forward slash sacrilegious discourse is our actual main page there. So, head on over and send us some love. Yeah. Husband. Wife. Do you know what we're doing? I do do know what I, we're, we're doing. <laughs> Are you sure? Because you sure couldn't say very much just then. I, I'm, but I'm sure. Okay. I'm absolutely sure. Yeah, we're... Um, we're finishing something. We are finishing up the book of Second Kings and doing a uh, You don't have a wrap-up song. Why don't you have a wrap-up song? Wrap it up, wrap it up. No, no? you're going to have to work on that. Okay, yeah. I'll get back to you. Yeah. Although you didn't like the other two I had either at first, so... Yeah, no, I know. Okay. But that one was... Just not, there wasn't any thought in it. it just, you just I took the words, you wrap I it hate, up, wrap it up. I hate to tell you I didn't put a lot of thought into well, the other ones yeah. either. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to burst your little bubble there. All right, so we're doing our wrap up for Second Kings. That is correct. All of them. All, all the kings. All the kings. All the Second Kings. Well, actually, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Kind of the first and second kings, the book of kings is the book. That's the right. Books. We didn't really do much of a wrap up for the last one, right? Because no, we did, but we didn't do um, a lot with like the contradictions and stuff like that because ah. um, it was one book broken into two. So it's the bookses of kings is. Got it. Got it. Okay. Sounds good. Well, let's get into this. Okie dokie. Okay. So the book of kings is. Okay. I broke it down into four separate. Uh, categories here. All right. Okay. The history of the book itself, the history of the kingses, the major themes of the king's bookses. Okay. And then the summary of the books of kings. Got okay? it. And I thought we'd do the summary real quick just to kind of remind ourselves what the fuck. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So the book of kings, the bookses of kings, were probably written during the time of Judah's captivity in Babylon, which begins at the end of Second Kings. Got it. Right? Like, yeah. They they just got swept. Right. So right, right, right. that's when the book of books so like, is. Well, we're, we're not ruling now, so we're bored. Let's write some books about it. <laughs> we're huh? in captivity or yeah. what the fuck ever. Right. Yeah. Uh, the temple of God was destroyed. Jerusalem was in ruins. The tribes of Judah, Benjamin, and some of Levi were serving a pagan king in a faraway country. Oh, no. So all kinds of shit happening, right? Right, right. Okay, so the books of First and Second Kings cover more than 400 years of Israelite history. Okay. Which, I mean, which we, we kind of said, like, several hundred years. Right, so, yeah. But four of the several hundred. Yeah. I mean, just okay. in the amounts of time that the kings were ruling, it yeah. felt like... And probably more so because they were back and forth between both sides, mm-hmm. but like, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, starting with the death of King David, that's what started off the book of First Kings, right? Which was approximately ten fifteen BCE. Okay. And then it concludes with the king, the death of King Joachim, 
right? Sometime after approximately 561 BCE. Got it. Okay. Yeah, when he got in the way of uh, the Egyptian dude down there. Yelp, yelp, at Megiddo or whatever right, the fuck it's right. called. Yeah. So the book of First Kings provides an account of the death of David and the reign of his son Solomon as God establishes his temple in Jerusalem. Right. Right? Yep. Then comes the decline and division of the kingdom of Israel after Solomon turns from God, but not till like the end of his long illustrious career as the best right. guy yeah, he was, and like wisest. they literally said he's the wisest ever never mm-hmm. shall you know, like mm-hmm. and, and the i mean like just the the shit that they say yeah yeah so it wasn't until like ridiculous. right at the end that it's like oh and he had five thousand wives and he sucked right. yeah 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 <laughs> it's like they snuck that little Bye. thing in there yeah <laughs> so jeroboam leads the northern kingdom away from god mm, sure Remember, okay. he's the worst ever, the worst except ever. he's not the worst ever. Right. And his people turn to idol worship. Yeah. Okay. The turn to, like it hadn't mm-hmm. been happening prior to no, that. No, not at Never. all. Not at all. No. Northern kings struggle for control, right? Yeah. Uh, against all the other people. Right. That are in and out. Including themselves. Right. And First Kings also recounts the ministry of the prophet Elijah. Among the northern ten tribes of Israel. Right. Okay. Yep. In Second Kings, God judges Ahab's family with Elisha and other prophets. Mm-hmm. Several kings of the north and south rule Israel and Judah, most of whom do evil in the Lord's sight. That's true. Mm-hmm. Israel, Israel falls to Assyria, while Judah reforms under Hezekiah. Right. Right. Yep. But then Manasseh provokes God and dooms Judah. But then, Damn that Manasseh. But then Judah again reforms, this time under Josiah. But God doesn't give a fuck. But they finally fall to Babylon at the end of the book of books of Kings. Right. You right? know, I just I I, I I'm I'm curious why God can't just intervene and keep all this shit from happening. It's supposed to be free will. We're supposed to choose him. And I'm like, but why yeah, should we? Yeah, but sometimes though? he doesn't believe in free will. Right. Exactly. So, like, especially when he kills motherfuckers, mm-hmm. that's not free will. No. I didn't choose to die. <laughs> no, exactly. That is true. That is true. Just saying. It's all a bunch of hooey bullshit. Yeah. So let's talk about the history of the book itself. And when I say book, I'm referring to First and Second Kings as a whole. Okay. Okay. The Book of Kings concludes the Deuteronomistic history, right? Okay. Um, was the history of Israel that... Also includes the books of Joshua, Judges, not Ruth. Right. And then First and Second Samuel. Got it. Okay. Yep. So Chronicles goes over a bunch of that stuff, and I'm not sure why it's not included, other than that, well, but it's written by somebody else. Right. So right. that's why. Yeah. No. So yeah. it's just interesting that it covers the same ground, but because it's a different author. It's not considered it's separate. the same. Yeah. Yeah. So I am excited to find out what the next section is right so that we can like I, I like grouping them and be like okay we finished another section i often wonder you know how why well, we haven't really got into it yet but like you know from what i've heard there's a lot of repeat right mm-hmm. like when the people were putting the bible together how did they decide that this canon was going to be repetitive as much as it is. I have no idea. You know, honestly. like, I, I'm curious. Like, what, what does it add? From you know? what I understand, the book of Jeremiah is also um, repetitive of what we've right covered. I think that the repetitiveness from different sources is supposed to lend to the authenticity of it actually having ah, happened. Okay. Um, I know that it's that way in the New Testament when we've got uh, the various... Um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John telling the same story, but from different perspectives. And so they don't right, always match right. up. And that's supposed to be like, isn't that neat that they don't match up perfectly? Right, that means it's yeah. real. Right. Yeah. But because, you know, whatever. we're supposed to believe four people to rule the entire, like to, to set the rules for the entire world for the rest of time. Yeah. Yeah. Four people get to decide that that's four what people. actually happened. Yeah. Exactly. Right? Like, I, what the fuck? I just, I can't with that. Right. So, I don't know. We're not there yet. I don't know. I'm not trying to have it. But, right, right. But to answer your question, they decided that different people telling the same story. Was makes, the way to go. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. Biblical commentators believe the books of Kings's were written to provide a theological explanation of 
for the destruction of the kingdom of Judah by Babylon in 586 BCE and to provide a foundation for a return from Babylonian exile. I mean, that makes sense. They yeah. they had apologists even back then. Because mm-hmm. they were like, because <laughs> they were already writing all of these things that were like, God says we're going to rule forever and ever. And then they got swept and they were like, wait, oh, what? Shit. We got to fix this. Yeah. So they had to kind of create this, this story that made it make sense. Make right. it make sense. Right, right. The two books of Kings present a history of ancient Israel and Judah from the... Oh, I already said that. Blah, blah, blah. Imprisonment in Babylon. Okay. When the book of Kings was translated into Greek in the Mm. last few centuries BCE, Samuel was joined with Kings in a four-part work called the Book of Kingdoms. Ah. So at first it was... um, First and Second Samuels and First and Second Kings. Got it. So it was this whole long book. Yeah. That is now four different books. Got it. Okay. Yeah. When the Latin translation was made for the Western Church, the Book of Kingdoms was first retitled the Book of Kings parts one to four. Okay. And then eventually both Samuel and Kings were separated into two books of each. Gotcha. So. Yeah. Used to be one. Then it was a couple, and now it's four. Right. Interesting. I mean, that makes sense. Like, sure. I, as you as you are, as priests, I'm sure, and, and pastor, whoever, people that are using the Bible mm-hmm. start using it, They there's different sections that are going to be, be unwieldy. Different. Right, yeah. yeah. And they're like, well, I don't need all of this. I just need that. So they're going to break it themselves into sections. And then mm-hmm. once it becomes something that everybody's doing, they're just going to be like, yeah, that's what that Let's is. Let's make it standard. Right. Yeah. According to Jewish tradition, the author of Kings was Jeremiah, who we haven't met yet. Okay. Um, he's one of the guys coming up here, I think, like, after Chronicles. Got it. I thought it was Ezra, but maybe it's Jeremiah okay. or something. I don't, sure. I'm not there yet, so I don't know. Got it. Um, he would have been alive, however, during the fall of Jerusalem. So okay. that so somebody has some... a first-hand account of right, which right. which makes a little bit of sense because mm-hmm. a lot of the things that we were talking about were more historical in in um, their writing as far as what they're writing yeah. about is very much a historical account, right? Some somewhat. Uh, yes, I'm going to actually address that specific thing that you just said right. in just a moment here. Okay. So the editors slash authors of the Deuteronomistic history cite a number of sources, including, for example. Um, the Book of the Acts of Solomon, which we don't have. Right. And the Annals of the Kings of Judah, which we don't have. Okay. And the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel, which we don't have. Right. Those are the King Chronicle, yeah, the, Kingly Chronicle, right. Chronicle that King. That fucking book. That fucking book. Yeah. Okay. Three of the Dead Sea Scrolls feature parts of the Book of Kings. Huh. I thought that was interesting. Yeah, that is pretty interesting. So, um... Addressing what you just were saying about how it's history kind of ish, right? The the style of history, Kings is quote history like, right? Rather than history in the modern sense, right? Mixing legends, folk tales, miracle stories, and fictional constructions in with the annals, and its primary explanation for all that happens is God's offended sense of what is right. Got it is it. therefore more fruitful to read it as theological literature. In the form of history, which I think is basically it's like Fox what we News said. for history in the Bible. Mm, is it though? Because fo- well, yeah, yeah, actually, okay, okay. <laughs> Faux news, F A U X. Right. Yeah. The theological bias is seen in the way it judges each king of Israel on the basis of whether he recognizes the authority of the temple in Jerusalem. Right. None do, and therefore all are evil. Right. And each king of Judah on the basis of whether he destroys the, quote, high places, rivals to the temple in Jerusalem. Right. Yeah. Okay. No, we talked about that a lot, actually, mm-hmm. because we're like, well, I mean, you know, sometimes we get caught up in the story and we're like, they were bad. And like, but, you know, but like. we forget ourselves. We're like, yeah, we forget ourselves because we're like, it's not really about bad or good. This is just the story of who, who won. Yeah. And yeah. they're telling it from their perspective because. Yep. We don't know anything about these fucking people, really, other than right. what they're telling us. And we are forced to believe this version because it's the version we have. Right, right. So. The standard Hebrew text of Kings presents an impossible chronology. So right. clearly 
a lot some, of this is some contradictions. Bullshit. Yes, yes, hmm. which we'll get to in another episode. <laughs> right, right, yeah. So the major themes of the Book of Kings are fourfold. Okay. Okay. God's promise, apostasy, judgment, and prophecy. And I'm gonna say a little bit about each of those. They love that fucking prophecy, don't they? Mm, like, and out. it's gonna happen, and then it happened. Yeah, exactly. Look how it happened. And then they it tell happened. you that it happened, thereby, you know, fulfilling the prophecy. You, you remember that shit? That shit happened. Yeah, which, I'm going to be honest, I'm kind of glad when they do that, because I don't remember. No, what I don't remember that. it either, but, like, they're very caught up in... They're smug. Look how God did the thing that he said he was going to do. They're very smug But, like, you it. fuckers are writing about this after it happened. Like, right. God didn't say shit. You just took this thing that somebody said God said would happen, and then... You just made this shit up. Right, right. Like, you're putting, you're making it work. Exactly. You know? Like, exactly. one of the things that, we used to both be booksellers. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that pissed me off more than anything was when anything bad happened in the world, the goddamn public would come in and buy Nostradamus when you and say, the Bible and all kinds of shit that was like... When you say anything like, bad, you're specifically referring to 9-11. Well, yeah, that was the one that was, that was really end. big when we were back there they selling books. They sold out. The day of 9-11, we sold out of all copies of anything to do with Nostradamus. Yeah. And bi- Bibles. Right, yeah, gone. no, Bibles were big then, too. It Those was like, two works were gone. I'm like, this is just sick. It was... It's just fucking sick. Yeah, I, I honestly, like, that day and the rest of the week, I was really grossed out. And I didn't want to help people. And I was really cranky about it because I was like, you people are gross. And then when we got all of the um, the official bagged copies of the New York Times right. um, to you, to buy as commemorative items yeah. to commemorate 9-11. And those were like selling off the shelves right. you know, because they're going to be worth something someday. And I'm like, you guys are sick. You guys are disgusting. I probably should have got fired that whole week if I'm being honest because <laughs> I was just so put out. I was like, no, we saw why? like it was just the the choices that people like. I just didn't understand it. Like, like I kept asking like, why Nostradamus though? Right. And like they kept saying oh, he foretold this, and I'm like, but where? Right. Like, can you? And nobody, nobody would like. Show me, like, on this page, he said Because nobody fucking knew. Somebody on some news program somebody or on something. Somebody Fox said, yeah, Mr. Like, this is in there. And, you know, there might have been something in there. I think there is something in there vaguely about some towers, towers falling or something crumbling. like that. Yeah. But, like, come the fuck on. Right. Just give me a goddamn break. Towers are going to crumble, y'all. Right? They did it in Jericho. Like, They're going to do oh it again. Oh, my God. He predicted something that would eventually happen, and it happened. Right? Yeah. I mean, it wow. Was, it was very... People stopped. I should just write down a bunch of shit now and be like, I am husband ostrus. And Hus- husband husband ostrus. Husband ostrus. And, oh, my God. And then I will predict all the things that are happening oh in the God. future. You're an and idiot. you all will believe that I am a prophet you're or not, something. You're not a prophet. I am definitely not a fucking prophet. You are not a prophet. Okay, so let's talk about these four themes. Yeah, okay, okay? sorry. The first one was God's promise. So, in return for Israel's promise to worship Yahweh alone, meaning no other yeah, gods right. before him, blah, 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 Yahweh makes promises to David and to Israel. To David, the promise that his line will rule Israel forever, and to Israel, the promise of the land they will possess. So, this is about God's promise. Well, and I, I have to say this, too. So, like, the idea of a single God, it, it kind of... Um, that idea grew into itself mm-hmm. in these books, like yes. within the last few books that we've read, because yes. there was more of a sense of a collective God of types yes. in previous books. Now, it wasn't that wasn't always very easy to read it either, but it definitely was there when you think about it. Oh, yeah. And the way that they word things changed dramatically. Yeah. In these newer books, as to how they are referencing what God is and who He is. Yep, sure did. So, yep. So the second one was apostasy, and I had to look that word up because what the fuck does that even mean? Are you familiar with that word? I've heard it. I don't. I I don't know what it means. It means the rejection of Judaism and possible conversion to another religion by a Jew. So we cannot commit apostasy because we aren't Jewish in the first place. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But um, that was the second theme. 
and it talks about the great tragedy of Israel's history, meaning the destruction of the kingdom and the temple, yeah. and that it due to the failure of the kings and thereby its people to worship Yahweh alone. So, first God made the promise, if you worship me alone, you'll get great things. And mm -hmm. apostasy um, happened, and they were like, we aren't going to worship you alone. And then three is judgment. And that's the natural God-ordained consequence of Israel's failure. All right. And through that, you know, the two kingdoms got swept. I just don't, you know, I, we've talked about this before, too. I, I don't like the idea of punishing everybody for everyone else's, you know, bad behavior, right? Mm -hmm. There's always going to be, like, you're telling me that every single person was not good. Every single one. Like, and we talked about this back when they, when you know. When Noah swept they, the planet. Well, and Sodom swept. and Gomorrah. And, yeah. you know. Yeah. Like, I mean, everybody was bad. Everybody. Really? According to God. And he would be the judge, right? And I, I take exception to this because I don't believe that everybody was bad. Now, whether they all worshipped God or not, I don't really give a fuck about because that's just petty bullshit. And if you can't handle somebody not knowing you because you haven't spoke up and not fucking worshiping you. But let's just say they did those things. They didn't worship you exactly the way you wanted to, but they were good people. Mm -hmm. And they lived their lives in a godly manner, mm -hmm. which I'm sure happened. Mm -hmm. You still chose to punish those people. Well, yeah. Because you're just a petty fuck. Yeah. And I'm just saying. like that's, that's not even the bad part. The bad part is people today choosing to worship that god i that's that's part of why i am so strongly atheist is that the people that quote unquote choose to worship god more often than not when i see them the ones that that present themselves right mm -hmm. the ones that are there in your face mm -hmm. letting you know how christian they are god bless you they're the fucking worst they are the they're, worst they're they're not good people no. they are generally there's there's generally a huge flaw with them as far as character or they're usually you know, selfish, self-centered, yeah. cruel, um bossy in your face and they're lacking not, in empathy. They're exactly the wrong people to be promoting God and they're the yeah. ones that are trying to promote God mm -hmm. these, these days. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm going off again. I know. So we had God's promise, and then when they don't do that, that's apostasy. Right. And then when they commit apostasy, they get judgment. And then after mm. that is part four, or the fourth theme, which is prophecy. Okay. And God's prophecies are always fulfilled, so any not yet fulfilled will be so in the of future. Of course, yeah. of course, yeah. yeah. And the re release of Joaquin at the end, remember? Yeah. When he got to sit at the table? Yep, okay. yep. So the release of Joaquin and his restoration to a place of honor in Babylon in the closing scenes of the book implies that the promise of an eternal Davidic dynasty is still in effect and that the Davidic line will be restored. Ah. That's why they added that little tidbit. He got I to see. sit at the table, y'all. Yeah, we don't want David's you questioning. David's still around. David's line is still here. Right. We don't want you questioning whether or not, you know, God was correct or not right like although the, there's lots of places where we can still question that but mm -hmm, that's all right mm -hmm. whatever but that's what the next episode that we're doing is the for. contradictions, the contradictions. Yeah. yeah yeah okay well did we cover everything that you we had covered everything that i had and that puts a wrap on uh second kings yeah second kings yeah and kings in general kings and the the books of kings is and the end of the deuteronomistic history wow that's a lot of ends yeah all right well Thanks for the journey through Kings, Second Kings with us here and, mm -hmm. and all the way up to now. And we'll see you guys uh, for the Contradictions episode, which will be out uh, tomorrow. I'm releasing this late tonight, which, like, as soon as I finish this shit. And then tomorrow morning we'll have the Contradictions episode and then the weekly wrap-up. Mm -hmm. So As well as the Sacrilegious Book. Yeah, 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 that too. So we got a lot of fucking recording to do tonight. Hurry up. <laughs> all right. Bye, guys. <laughs> bye. Hey, wife, I guess that's the end. But husband, that's just sad. It doesn't have to be. We are on lots of social media platforms like Twitter. Our handle there is sacrilegious underscore D. For D's nuts. Oh my God. 
stop doing that. Anyway, we're also on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. There's a link to all of our social media sites at our website. Ooh, we have a website? Yeah, it's sacrilegiousdiscourse.com, where you can also find a link to our merch shop. We have a merch shop? Yep. We have podcast-themed clothing, mugs, notebooks, and more, as well as an atheist and science-themed products. Wow, our fans should really go check that out right now. Definitely. They can get in touch with us by sending an email to sacrilegiousdiscourse at gmail.com. But before they do that, we could really use some help. Oh, yeah? With what? Well, it's not free running the podcast, and we need some financial support in order to get better equipment, which will free up time so we can concentrate on our podcast and our fans. Okay, so what should they do? Head over to patreon.com forward slash sacrilegious discourse and sign up as a contributor on our podcast. Supporters there receive additional bi-weekly episodes that we record just for our Patreon members for as little as $2 a month. Also, we'd really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe on whatever platform you're using. And Apple Podcast Reviews help us out tremendously. Like and subscribe. Leave an Apple review. Join us on Twitter. Support us on Patreon. That's a lot of instructions. Don't forget to say thanks. Thanks. Okay, bye.